Claire, let me ask you this. Uh, as an Ohio State fan, and you can speak for many, and I'm sure you've talked to many, the, the thought about a Michigan State game that is most likely for the Big Ten Eastern Division, certainly for the lead in the division, uh, either team would have to finish off and complete the run start to finish to the end of the season and win uh, out to get to the Big Ten Championship. Because the college football playoff has completely dominated the college football conversation and the goals and aspirations of teams that that have a legitimate shot to get there. Uh, does this game mean what it would have meant a few years ago to most fans? I don't think to fans it does. I think the coaches will say that it does. Uh, obviously, it's still good for recruiting. It's still good to have the, the Big Ten championship under your belt. But I the problem is, is that, yes, it's it, the – the gateway to the playoff would most likely be a Big Ten championship win, but that's not going to be the case for the Big Ten champion this year, most likely, unless it's Wisconsin at this point. Uh, I, I don't see the case for an Ohio State team with two losses, even though they're a conference championship or champion, to go in and, and go ahead and somehow be deserved of a playoff berth. And I don't know about you, but I've heard of a lot of Ohio State fans today, as much as they love their Buckeyes, I don't know if they want to see something like what happened with Clemson last year in another playoff situation where they may not even deserve to be there at this point. Yeah, so I think that's an unfortunate part of the playoff system. I approve of the playoff from the standpoint that it was better than the BCS, but it's not the the perfect system. There is no perfect system, but there could be a much better system. The system is automatically flawed because you've got five major conferences plus independents running around like Notre Dame and you have four spots. So it's it's legitimately flawed. I would argue that with anyone, and I will give you clear evidence as to why it's flawed. That's the first point. That's pretty logical. Uh, we And this has nothing to do with the Big Ten. It has nothing to do with Ohio State. In year number one, yes, Ohio State validated the selection uh, as the four-seeded team over Baylor and TCU, uh, but that's in hindsight. Uh, as the committee selected it that day, they chose the Big Ten champion over the Big 12 champion with one loss aside uh, from everyone involved. And I didn't even think that the selection should have been made between those three teams because aside from Florida State, there were two other teams in Alabama and Oregon who were just given free passes into the playoff. They also had one loss as well. So they were selecting three spots among five teams and it's a difficult decision and they had to make it. Now it was validated by the outcome, but I don't think that validated the decision. It was still left uh, it's still left a conference out a conference has been left out each year i don't think it's a good system uh, i think it's a bit ridiculous because you're judging a conference that may be extremely strong that may uh, cannibalize itself we hear that term a lot this time of year in college football but it's true a really good conference could cannibalize itself and the committee has to try to select the four best teams not the four best conferences and i believe the big 10 to be one of the four best conferences but uh, with not necessarily a legitimate uh, a team that's distinguished itself based on the resume and that's that's too bad but uh, and that diminishes the conference championship then because everybody's focused on the playoff and it diminishes it diminishes the, the how the conference championship is weighted when a team like um, my Buckeyes last year were not playing for the Big Ten championship and were still selected in the playoff. Um, I understand the algorithm of how they chose it, and it definitely again the choice was justified when Penn State went on to lose their bowl game. Uh, however, it still didn't make a lot of sense to anyone when Clemson blew out Ohio State at that point. So you're right, it's a flawed system, but at this point, it does not look like if Ohio State was to win on and go and win the Big Ten Championship, it's definitely an accomplishment. It's definitely something that Urban Meyer and his staff um, say that that's the first thing they want to do. Billy Price came on and said there's still so much ahead. But honestly, I think they're using it more in the team as a tool to keep this team alive, to keep these young men going and going towards a goal. Otherwise, at this point, the the bowl games are, are meaningless. I would tell my team and I would tell my team this and I wouldn't necessarily uh, expect them to 
they, they can believe me, but to buy it are two different things. So, so this is the truth. The Big Ten Championship is, a, is an objective goal. Uh, there is a, a, st a standard set to win a Big Ten championship, and it's clear, and you win it on the field. You cannot guarantee getting to a college football playoff. That, that is something elusive. That's something that's determined by 13 people. That's, it's not a subjective goal. Uh, we, we know that if you take care of business to a certain extent on the field that you're going to take care of that. I just, again, I think it's unfortunate that a Big Ten championship is not good enough uh, in this situation or any conference championship, because I think that every conference champion should be involved in a playoff, regardless of what their record is. These teams play in silos. They, they, uh, the conference is playing silos. You only have a smattering of a few games each season in the non-conference schedule that mean anything against quality opponents. And we're evaluating teams based on really did the outcomes of the Penn State, Michigan State, and Ohio State Iowa games tell us anything about the Big Ten? Well, they told us that you can interpret it a number of ways. You could say, well, the, the Big Ten's mediocre because just about anyone can beat anyone. Or you could say the Big Ten's extremely strong because there are that many good teams that can beat each other. You can come up with whatever narrative you want because there's not enough games being participated against the other conferences to come up with a, a, a narrative or a strength of schedule per se. It's it's just a flawed system and it doesn't make any sense. It is. And it's and someone that was a, a you know, obviously a fan of a team that was part of the, that is part of the Big Ten, we heard that narrative in the majority of the sports media for a really long time out of the SEC. And we all kind of, you know, rolled our eyes and we thought, oh, here we go again. Yeah, the, the SEC is so great because they're cannibalizing themselves, just like you mentioned. And uh, now that it's actually happening in the Big Ten in our own backyard, um, I'd like to believe, and I still do believe, that the Big Ten is still one of the strongest conferences. Um, and But it's difficult to justify when something like this happens. So Michigan State's on the docket, regardless of what it means to, to anyone. It does mean uh, first place in the Big Ten Eastern Division. And if whoever the winner is can move on and win the rest of its games, then Ohio State would still have a tough one up north uh, to go on to the Big Ten Championship to even to either spoil it for the conference or to uh, a, be a loser to Wisconsin's big win to carry them through uh, to a Big Ten championship undefeated season in the college football playoff for the Badgers, who may not be the best team in the Big Ten. But regardless, uh, you got Michigan State and Ohio State playing, and it means that it, it is a tangible lead uh, for first place in the Big Ten East to get to the championship game.